parents of Reddit, what are some things you bought for your first baby that were useless or a waste of money? Christmas last year and I was with my one-year-old cousin. She had well over 150 pounds worth of toys from various members of the family. She spent the day playing with a potato. My son has been playing with a massage ball, wooden spoon, and old Diet Coke with dry pasta in it. That's all he wants. On the airplane, he cried if he didn't have the bag of pretzels to crinkle. What? Not a father, but I am an uncle. When my first nephew was born, I used my savings, I was like 12 at the time, to buy the little guy a tricycle. I didn't know that the little baby couldn't even sit up on his own. Money down the drain. This is the cutest thing I have ever heard. We bought stuff to make our own baby food, like we were going to be these super parents or something. By the time your kid is eating anything other than breast milk or formula, your wife is back to work. Some babies sleep pretty well by then. Ours didn't, still don't. So we're completely sleep deprived, working full time, can't keep up with laundry or dishes or anything. And this fancy stuff we bought to liquefy apples and spinach is collecting dust because jars of food are like $1.49 and we haven't slept a full night since November 2016. Also, those baby bullet things are pretty redundant if you have a blender. Wife bought one. We did get a lot of use out of it though because our daughter was pretty good about sleeping. I had so many family members buy my daughters these frilly, lacy, thin dresses. They were born in winter, so impractical as well as itchy and a pain to put on them. Babies are all about comfort and ease. Luckily, our family never got us anything like that. Our girls are two and finally got a girly pink dress. I loved onesies that folded or buttoned in front over the tummy. It was easier to put them on compared to those that are put on overhead. We bought one of these automated swinging cradles. Even at the lowest setting, the thing would just move too fast. Result, a terrified looking baby that just wanted to get out. Hilarious to watch, I must admit, but not useful. It's funny because swings are so hit or miss with kids. I've met people that said, it's the only place she would sleep for six months. And people whose baby would scream the second you put them in it. Personally, my son never cared for swings either. I'd say to anyone who wants to try one, get one with a good return policy. Clothes. I was so excited. I purchased tons and tons of the NB and zero to three month sizes. I was really young and didn't really have a strong support system to explain how quickly my son would grow out of things. Additionally, I washed them all straight away when I was nesting. Love the smell of ivory snow, so I couldn't return any of it. The other thing you don't realize is that they all grow at different rates, and trying to buy a head for winter or summer based on the X to Y months sizing is fraught with peril. Only five months in, but clothes. I do laundry so often, every day, that she really doesn't need that many different outfits. She maybe will wear each thing only a handful of times before she's grown out of it. Get four or five bodysuits, pants, socks, bibs per size, that is plenty. Also baby shoes. My mother-in-law bought a bunch without telling me. She's never worn any and has outgrown most by now. Also, a changing table. My mother-in-law insisted I needed one. Changed her on it once, but it made me hella nervous. I just changed her on the bed or floor. Babies can't fall off of the floor. The only reason we use a changing table is because it's just on top of the dresser, where all his stuff is stored. If it was just a table, it would be useless. The one I am most ashamed of was a wipes warmer. The most important one was basic ignorance though. Do not buy new clothes for babies or toddlers. Look for consignment sales in your area where parents sell things as their kids outgrow them for next to nothing. There are several that are held throughout the year. Since babies just sit there doing nothing, their clothes effectively never wear out. My wife found brand new with tags still on, stuff there from time to time as well. There's also toys, strollers, books, etc. You throw a baby shower and all these people run out to buy clothes. You're six months pregnant and it's June. Now guess how many people who ran out and bought baby clothes bought not to three month size clothes that were appropriate to June rather than September to November. Yeah. Now imagine how many people bought the most darling outfit that your little tyke will grow into that ends up being wildly seasonally inappropriate when they do grow into it. 
And then there's the stuff that's absolutely perfect and well-chosen and utterly timely that you completely forgot about by the time they hit that stage and didn't find it again until they'd missed it. A lot of baby clothes are consigned well. Changing tables. Beds, sofas, and the floor were what we ended up using. Diaper bags. Had one with the first child, but hated it. So for the second child, I just bought a backpack or a book bag. That thing lasted over 15 years and through two kids. My husband was also much more willing to carry it than a diaper bag. I loved my daughter's changing table when we lived in a one-story, fairly cozy apartment. But I never used it once we moved to a two-story place. My daughter just turned one. Here's a rundown. You don't need a camera to monitor your baby. Ours broke, so we're down to using our audio-only monitor. We're much happier now we wait for clear audio signals instead of looking to see if they're moving their hands. You need one sleeping bag, not eight. You need four good, big wraps, not eight and 20 small ones. You need all the baby wipes your savings account allows. You don't need toys, you need books. Read your child. New books keep it at least a little interesting for you. You don't need 200 skincare products. You need one very good quality shampoo and skincare wash, pseudo creme, and nothing else. We didn't buy any toys for our daughter's first birthday. We put $200 into her bank account and bought her a single book. The family and friends bought enough to pile up our eight-seater dining room table alone. Don't be too proud to use hand-me-downs. They only vomit on them anyway. That's the one that got me. I ended up spending a hefty amount on a baby monitor that connected to our Wi-Fi, and I could pretty much watch my kid from any room in the house, including on my smartphone. My kid was a wiggle worm, so she would just roll out of view of the camera. So then I adjusted the camera up further so I could see the whole crib. Then I realized 99% of the time I was in the same room as my kid. So I literally spent like $250 to watch my kid sleep for about three minutes before I fell asleep. Then it broke. The next monitor I bought was like an army surplus special I found in a thrift store for under $10. The big frilly accessory on it was you could adjust the volume. Worked perfectly. Buy a rocking chair for the baby's room. You're probably going to spend a lot of time sitting on it. Even better, buy a comfy rocking chair and put it in front of the TV. Then pick a show on Netflix with at least eight seasons and save it for when the baby arrives. With my first, I used to look forward to getting up at night to nurse so I could watch the next episode fourth child coming soon and already compiling my list and getting new thicker cushions made for my very well-used rocking chair. We bought three different sized cat nets to protect the baby from the cat. Supposedly, cat suffocating babies is a big thing. The cat took one look at the baby, noped out of the room, and never went near it again. I mean, maybe some cats would sleep on a baby, but those three cat nets never left their packaging. My grandmother told us an old wives' tale about how cats would suck the breath from babies because they smelled the milk. And other people were serious about how we needed to protect the baby from the cats. Meanwhile, in reality, when my newborn would cry, our older cat would jump on our bed and meow impossibly loud like, Help the kid! And the younger cat would stare wide-eyed and scurry away. She has done that for nine years whenever my daughter makes noise. Fancy diapers. I do not mean cheap, leaky diapers. I mean the organic, free-range diapers. We spent a lot of extra money on the expensive diapers with our first child. Free-range? What do they do, let the diapers run around a field before packaging them? Unless you're wrapping your kid in banana leaves, I don't think there is a 100% organic diaper. Now I'm imagining a picket line demanding better treatment for diaper kind. Never buy any bibs with cute little pictures or sayings on them. They lose all absorbency where the decoration is. The best are the ones that are basically a small towel with an elastic neck hole. Also, something I can never stress enough to parents, buy a set of bandage scissors. Your spawn can and will vomit themselves so bad that cutting off their clothes is the best option. Bandage scissors are made to cut clothing while affording some protection to the skin. It's much better to throw away an outfit than try and pull a slimy, poopy shirt off over the kid's head. Great idea, but I just have to point out that newborn to 12 months onesies are designed to go over the shoulders and pull down. No blowouts dragged to the upper body and head. Of course, that blowout onesie goes straight to the trash, but you don't have to cut it off. For damn near the first two to three years, just about every toy you get is completely pointless. You know that old adage, you get the gift, they play with a the box? It's worse. 
You spend hundreds on sparkly toys and their favorite thing in the whole world is a defunct cordless telephone. Why bother? Read books to them. Read your books to them. Let them bang pots and pans and hand them a wooden spoon and your old bathrobe. They're happier than they are playing with a model of Lightning McQueen that chirps a catchphrase. Why? Because all that cars can do is be a car. Not any car, like a block with wheels, can be a train car or a race car or a semi. It can only be El McQueen. That's worse than useless. That kills the imagination. That's how you end up with a six-year-old who calls dragging an Elsa doll back and forth while monitoring, I'm Elsa, I'm Elsa, playing Frozen. No, Elsa can't walk to the store. This is skating Elsa. She has skates on, so she can only skate. God forbid you suggest we pretend she hasn't got skates on and wants to do her shopping. It's skating Elsa. Does it show I met this kid? Christ, having no imagination would be terrible. Hell, as a kid, I pretended my hand was a little friendly monster. I got hours of enjoyment from that.